Hi there, so I just finished this fan art of Lady Maria from Bloodborne and I want to give you a little insight into how I created this artwork. That said, this is not a tutorial on how to draw specific things, but more so an explanation on how I approach stuff like this. Ok, let's get started. Step 1. Find good references. Since I already knew what I wanted to draw in the beginning, I searched up some fitting references consisting of in-game screenshots, concept art and anatomy refs. This step is incredibly important and a lot of beginner artists skip it completely. Just know there is no shame in using references. If anything, it helps you grow as an artist. Step 2. Sketching the base. I started sketching out Lady Maria in Clip Studio Paint. And I'm using the design pencil brush as I really like how it flows and you know it has a very natural feeling to it. When I sketch a person I first draw them in a kind of naked mannequin version as it helps me getting the anatomy right. Afterwards I begin drawing out the clothes on top of the body. Now I'm focusing on the face. This perspective is super hard for me, so I open up my ref to help me. Here I'm laying out the background, which is the clock face of the Astro Tower. It's a pretty complex thing to draw with lots of circles. So I'm using the figure tool in Clip Studio to make a circle, which I just duplicate and rotate a bunch of times. Then I duplicate the whole set of circles, scale it down and voila, we have a clock face. Step 3. Base colors and rough shading. I like to start painting in a rough background. You also see me pasting the references directly onto the canvas. Having them in front of me helps me getting the colors right. Then I start filling in the outlines to get a clean silhouette. If you would actually clean your lines, unlike me, you could easily fill them in with the fill bucket. But you know, I couldn't be bothered. Now there are two ways of proceeding. The first one, which is probably cleaner, would be to make layers for everything. For example, the skin, the hair, the different parts of the clothes, etc. The second one is to just paint everything in one layer, which is what I'm doing here, because I'm a masochist. No, but for real. Making a layer for every little something drives me insane, so I just paint it all in one layer. Not every time, but you know, this time it makes sense. Step 4. Merge outlines with colors. I color in the outlines with a surrounding color and then merge the line art layer with the color layer. This gives me further control over my painting, as I can just paint over my outlines how I see fit. It also allows me to select whole parts of the body and transform or adjust them without worrying about multiple layers. The first thing most people look at is the face, so it's important to get it right. You will see me refining the face over the course of this video many times. Here I noticed that I forgot to add her cape, so I'm doing this real quick on a layer beneath. I also have to correct the rim light, as the cape is now blocking some light.
Step 5. Refining the background. Right, as I said before, the clock face is quite complex. I noticed that my version has too many circles, but I, you know, I decided no one will notice that. I use the figure ruler a lot in this phase. It allows you to snap your strokes to a circle or any other shape, which is super useful. Here I add details to the first ring of the clock face. I then use the same technique as before. I duplicate the ring and rotate it, like a lot of times. This is by no means perfect, but as the background is not the focal point of this illustration, I don't care that much. Now I add the second layer of the clock face, which probably has some kind of pattern, but I just draw in some semi-random shapes, because that's totally enough. To get those nice foggy sun rays, I separated the white areas of the clock face and used the blend brush to shape them into sun rays. A quite easy but powerful detail. Then I create a layer on top of it with the blend mode set to add glow. And I paint in some more lights. Two more layers set to glow dodge give me this, well, glowing light, which I add especially around her face. All those lights help to give her a nice clean silhouette. The last thing missing is the blood flowing out of her body. For this I first painted in some blood splatters using the flame brush. I then used the blur filter radial blur to give it the feeling of movement.
And that's pretty much it. I hope you liked my first commented walkthrough tutorial time lapse thing. And if you have any questions or feedback on what I can improve in these videos, let me know below in the comment section. If you want to see more of my stuff, hit subscribe or follow me on social media. Alright, see ya!